Today we hear a story of revenge against somebody who passed gas on a dog. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, make fun of my stuffed animal? Failure midterm. So someone else posted something similar, and it reminded me of my first attempt at college, which I failed out of. My own fault. I had so much anxiety that I couldn't bring myself to go half the time. It was 20 years ago when I was 18 and an untreated nut job. So partly because I thought it would help me make new friends, admittedly immaturely, I had a stuffed naked mole rat from a certain Disney show that I put in the water bottle pouch of my messenger bag. On my first day of class, this girl who was about my age was sitting next to me and quietly mocking me to a friend. She mocked my weight, my beard, and especially the stuffed animal. She didn't stop the whole first class and made me feel awful. The first few weeks of class were easy because it only covered things I'd already covered in psych class in high school. So I did really well and she saw me get 100% on the first test. But then the class got a lot harder and I was having trouble keeping up. Then I noticed the girl who had been mocking me copying my assignments and tests, even though I knew I was doing really poorly. During the midterm, which I was sure I was going to fail, I slyly made sure to move my arm so she had a better view of my test. When the test came back the next week, I got a low D and she got an F. Probably because there was a short essay that she couldn't copy, and she did worse on that than me. She approached me after class that day and said something like, What the heck, I thought you were smart. I wish I'd said something funny or clever, but I just responded, Yeah, sorry, I'm not, and walked out. She dropped the class that week so she could take an incomplete instead of fail. You just gotta love though, when the revenge is so easy, you just do your thing and it happens. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit that subscribe button down below. That said, our next story is no footage for you. About two months ago, a house across the street was rented by young guys that have super loud crap box cars and have all of their idiot friends showing off by brapping up and down the street at all hours. Just total jerks about it. Today, I was surfing the net and heard a loud crash on the street. Checked my security cam, saw that a resident idiot was backing onto the street and got smoked by an SUV. No injuries I'm aware of. Now, I'm no expert, but it seems backing onto the street would at least be a partial fault situation. Funny thing is, my video shows that the SUV didn't slow at all, nor try evasive action. Just plowed right into the guy. I think the driver was on the phone or something. It's fairly obvious, like no last second swerve or screech of brakes. I was thinking the video could at least show some responsibility for the SUV driver and help resident idiot, but why be neighborly when he's a complete jerk? Now there's a moral quandary, should you or shouldn't you, when they're clearly not at fault, but you hate their guts. This next story is Scammer Scammed by Uncle and Granny. So a couple of years ago, my grandfather died and my grandmother decided to sell his car to help with funeral costs. Shortly after, her engine blew up and she needed a new car. She went to a small local car dealership that was in someone's front yard and bought a gently used Buick. One week later, the engine blew up in it and they refused to do anything about it. And oh well, the warranty was voided because of XYZ. My uncle called them and they said, not every purchase is a winner, it's luck of the draw. This of course made him upset, but there was some truth to it. About a month later, Granny calls him and tells him that once again this has happened, except this time to her bingo friend Mildred. Mildred had heard about her going there and thought it was good, not realizing the issue Granny had. Bingo was every three weeks. This is now two old ladies that he knows of that have been sold defective cars that eat the dust right after buying. He learns that Sandra is wanting to trade her car in, and he gets an idea. He asks Sandra if he can buy it, and she go get another car. She says deal. So he goes and gets the title transferred in a bill of sale. He goes to that guy with the two faulty cars, and asks to sell his car as he's strapped for cash. Being the shark that he is, he lowered the price a good bit and my uncle lost $400. However, the car guy didn't know that my uncle had clogged the radiator full of that stuff to clog leaks because there was a small slow leak. Did an oil change apparently but didn't put in enough. Same with the transmission. When the guy asked, he told the truth. I did a fluid flush and there was a small leak but I fixed it. Next day, the guy's calling and said that this car was ruined and had no fluids at all. 
My uncle laughed and said, well, you should know not every purchase is a winner. It's luck of the draw. When I say this man owned a dealership, I mean he had 10 cars in his driveway with for sale signs. And all he did was basically buy junk cars and flip them to unsuspecting people like old ladies. Our next story is, played a little hardball with a friend's ex who cheated on her. A close friend, Emma, of mine, got married to a man of her dreams, or so she thought. I'll call him DS for dip crap. Emma packed up her stuff and moved out of state. DS is in the Air Force, and they decided to try for a baby when Emma moved out, since their families are super religious. Emma called me crying about eight weeks after their wedding. She found out DS had been cheating on her. The girl he was with had an STD, so DS couldn't keep it a secret anymore. So I paid for Emma to fly back immediately to live with me. I took Emma to the doctors. All the while, DS was love bombing her phone, trying to guilt Emma for wanting an annulment. Emma didn't reply to him, but he became super annoying. Emma ended up blocking DS and anyone associated with him as soon as the annulment went through. A few more weeks go by and while at my doctor's appointment, his mom called me, trying to fix Emma and DS's marriage. I asked her questions like, what's the father's blood type? Confused, she answered them. When she asked me why, I told her that I was filling out pregnancy paperwork at the doctor's. Technically, it's my paperwork, but she didn't need to know that. Then I told Deadbeat's mom the nurse is asking for me, then hung up on her. To this day, his mom stops by my house unannounced since she hasn't been able to contact my friend. It's been a year and a half. I just would love to find out what this mom actually thinks about this whole situation. Our next story is, won't participate in group project? Okay. So this is a story from last year, during my 8th semester of my bachelor's. I studied bachelor's of technology and mechanical engineering, and in India, you need to do a group project to pass. This project has been going on since 7th semester, when we were told about the groups and the topics. I hated the people I was paired up with, as they were among the people who rarely attended college and failed every class. I knew I had to do the project alone, so I did and took the most important parts of the presentation to explain. They of course freeloaded off of me and wanted me to send my report to copy. I had to comply because all teammates needed to have the same copy. It was frustrating. Now fast forward to the 8th semester, everything is now offline. Still, my teammates didn't want to do a thing and freeload off me. I decided it was enough and I needed to do something. This semester, we had to work on the same project but do some more research, yada yada. They didn't even turn up to any meetings the teacher kept for discussing the projects and how to do it. I did everything as usual, but this time I took the introduction part to explain. Remember, this time the presentation would be offline, and that means no more hiding behind the camera with video off stuff. I made the necessary changes for my slides, but didn't really double check their slides for the presentation. I did the presentation and the report all by myself while coordinating with Sir, so there were mistakes that I couldn't see. D-Day arrives. They didn't even print out their report until the last moment and blamed it on me how I should have printed it out for them. I just rolled my eyes. I started with the presentation, answered the questions of the external examiner and came back to my seat. This is where the fun part begins. Team member A went next. The image of the truck I put in had 16 wheels, and the one we worked on has 10 wheels and he was asked about that. Had no clue. Got roasted. Team member B was asked what torque is, as I put the SI unit wrong, and was dumbfounded. Team member C was asked about everything wrong in the presentation. Dude started saying all the references I put, and the teachers were laughing amongst themselves. At the end, the examiner could guess I was the one who made the presentation, and I agreed. I'm happy I got my revenge. They deserved it as they contributed nothing. To summarize, I had the best day and still laugh about it when I narrate this story to my friends. Would it be worth totally tanking your grade just to stick it to these people? Obviously a good teacher or professor would be able to identify that one person did all the work, and give separate grades. The one thing that infuriates me is one that is unrelenting as far as it had to be a group effort. This next story is, my childhood friend stole $20 from me 
so I ruined her relationship. She was my friend from first grade. Haven't seen her since then. Fast forward 2017 and we started talking. And she wanted something serious, but I explained to her that I don't want a long distance relationship. So it ended there and never spoke again. When I went to visit my home country, I happened to stay a couple of days in her city. So I texted her to let her know I was in town. She was in disbelief, so she invites me to her home, and I went there the same night. We sit in the amusement park, started talking about our childhood memories, what we've been up to, and other random stuff. She mentioned to me that she had a boyfriend and was getting married soon, and that she was getting a bunch of plastic surgeries next month, all paid by her boyfriend. I told her I wanted to exchange my dollars, so she offered to take me to a currency exchange, but they were all closed, so we went back to her apartment. When I decided to leave, she told me the doorman shouldn't allow visitors at this time of night because of COVID, so she told me we should bribe him and asked me to pay him $5. I only had 20s and 100s on me, so she offered to take a bill up to her home and come back with the exchanged currency. I gave her a $20 bill and there she went. I waited for 10 minutes until I got impatient and started calling her. She didn't respond, so I went to the doorman and asked him if it was true that guests weren't allowed at this time, and he told me no, so I told him how she scammed me. Then she comes out on the balcony and told me, those $20 aren't going to make you go bankrupt, nor will they get me rich. I was fuming on my way home, not because of the money, but because I got played. I screenshotted our conversation where she invited me over, and some old interested texts she used to send to me and photoshopped the dates so they looked recent. I searched her whole Instagram followers and found her boyfriend right on time before she blocked me. I sent the dude the screenshots and told him I was hooking up with his girlfriend, but I felt too bad for making someone cheat and decided to make the thing right. He went to the apartment to check if I was really there and there I was. Good thing he didn't check the whole thing, otherwise I would have been busted. He breaks up with her, and she calls me insulting the living crap out of me for lying. I acted as if we did hook up just to make her angrier in in case she was recording for proof. He asked me if I was the one who gave her $20. She took him out for ice cream with my money. One of the top comments on this post says, If you give somebody $20 and you never hear from them again, might have been a good investment. At least they didn't keep bothering you for more, and you know exactly what kind of person they are. Our next story is, leave your piss, say hello to the internet. One of my flatmates doesn't flush and leaves the toilet seat up. Countless times, we've asked him not to do that, and even showed him videos on how to do it with the caption that it's that easy. I went into the bathroom to clean my teeth, and he's left the seat up with pee in the toilet. So I take a snap, mention him along with the words, other people live here too, and sent it in the group chat. You leave pee in the toilet, it gets on the internet. I'm going to be doing it every time he does that. Who knows, I might put it in a couple of popular places. P.S. I put the lid down, flushed, washed my hands, and then cleaned my teeth. He's probably going to be pissed, pun intended. I should reiterate, other people live in the house and do not want to see that when going into the bathroom. Also, he did leave brown pee in the toilet one time, which is frankly concerning, and he didn't drink enough water. Yeah, I mean, this is where you start going a little bit more public. Put it in a place where somebody who he actually respects enough to feel embarrassed about is going to see it. Our next story is, I'm texting my ex-boyfriend's extremely religious parents that he was paying random women to hook up unprotected and demanding STD results. Here's the full slash original story. I've always been petty when it comes to breakups since I was in high school, but I'm an adult now so I won't be licking Jolly Ranchers and sticking it to his windshield or exposing his number on social media. What I'm doing is much worse. My now ex's parents are incredibly religious. Every time I'm at their house, they're blasting Christian music, have crosses slash Jesus related things hanging up on all the walls and say grace before every meal, including restaurants. They also go to church one to two times a week, and he went to a religious school his whole entire life. He was taught to save himself for marriage, and they won't even allow us, grown adults, to be in a room alone together because his mom thinks my mom wouldn't appreciate that, when in reality, I think she's worried about us doing something. 
We dated for 8 months and we were pretty active. He told me the first time we did it that he was a virgin. I sort of freaked out at first, but it made sense knowing how he grew up being taught about purity and modesty. A couple weeks ago, he told me he wore protection when he didn't and finished inside. I was fuming pissed, but exhausted, so he went and bought me a plan B. After about 30 minutes of arguing in the CVS parking lot, because he told me since I'm the one taking it, I should buy it, and buying it would give him an anxiety attack. Fast forward to two nights ago when he came clean, and told me he had multiple unprotected one night stands with girls he met on Tinder. He lied about being a virgin. Obviously, I freaked the freak out, afraid for my safety. He got mad saying he didn't judge me when he found out I wasn't a virgin prior to meeting him, but that was clearly not the issue. The fact that he can't see why I'm upset is infuriating. So I plan on texting his extremely religious parents that I'm incredibly nervous for his health because he went online and paid girls to hook up with him. That he insisted to these girls that he didn't want to wear protection and finished inside hoping that they bought a plan B on their way home or were on birth control. I'm also going to demand STD test results immediately because I'm worried for my safety and I'm afraid I have AIDS or HIV from him because of the amount of random women he slept with. Hopefully his parents don't have a stroke. So I cooled off before texting her and took out the whole paid for it part because I feel like the truth is already damaging enough to answer comments about what he did to me and lying about having protection on being sexual assault. I looked into it. It's only considered that in California and we're not in California. Hopefully that law will change for victims in the future, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do. When I sent the text, it never delivered because it turns out he'd gone onto his mom's phone and he blocked my number. Then he drove to my house and started spam calling me to go outside so we could talk and he could give me my stuff. I agreed, I wanted my stuff, and when I got there, he begged to talk to me and explain himself, so I agreed. I wanted to hear his lame excuses. He starts begging me for a second chance. The man was hyperventilating and crying, blowing snot into his shirt. Tried to hold my hand to calm down, having a full-on panic attack, while I just sat there trying to hold back laughter. I think he noticed because he kept saying how his pain isn't funny. I told him what isn't funny is hooking up with random strangers unprotected because he put my health at risk. He proceeded to tell me that they were all virgins because he liked virgins and knew they were clean. I asked him if they bled on him and he shrugged and said, some of them did, big deal. Does he not know that virgins can still have AIDS? So I had to sit there and explain to this grown man that virgins can. Well, turns out he didn't know. Apparently his Christian school didn't have a basic health class. Then he told me he would do anything to have me back and even said he'd get an epilepsy ribbon tattoo for me because I'm epileptic. What the freak? So I was like, okay, you're freaking insane. Then went back inside. A week and a half later, I was at the gym running on a treadmill when I got a notification. I looked down and lo and behold, it's his mother. To be quite honest, I was nervous because I didn't know how she would take the news. The text read this, Hi OP. When I found out you two had broken up, I went to text you and noticed he blocked your number on my phone. He was very ashamed of himself like he should be. His father and I are both very hurt to hear he's done this to you. He came clean to us just now and I'm very disappointed in him. Just know, our family still cares about you. I also want you to know that he keeps saying how he got tested back in September and that he's clean. The relief I felt when she was on my side as for everyone asking if I got tested for STDs, I did a urine test and I came back clean for everything, but I'm contemplating getting a pap smear as well. He still bothers me and shows up to my college just doing his homework in our study area because at his college there isn't a good one, which is bizarre because we go to different colleges. He used to go to my college to get his prerequisites, but he doesn't anymore. I'm too busy or tired to even complain, but I just think it's weird. I don't know if I should call it a happy ending or not, but thanks for the support everyone, y'all are dope. I would definitely think that this is some kind of creepy behavior and I think it would be worth mentioning to the campus security. 
Also, he already admitted to having gotten a hold of his mom's phone before, so you can't really trust that it was the mom. This could be some part of an attempted bigger plan, you know? This next story is, inconsiderate neighbors can enjoy the chirping. My fiance and I are moving out of our old apartment, in part because of our awful downstairs neighbors. Over the last year and a half, living above them has been pretty terrible. They often scream at their kids and each other, but their specialty is slamming doors. The slamming almost always starts around a certain time of the evening, so my fiancé and I would joke, Oh goodness, is it slam o'clock already? Or, what time is it, sweetie? It's half past slam o'clock. Even though the downstairs neighbors are so loud, they have absolutely no tolerance for any noises from us. Oftentimes when we drop something on the floor or make other standard apartment life noises, these neighbors start banging on their ceiling, our floor. Now for our petty revenge. About two months ago, our fire alarm started chirping because the battery was getting low. We immediately replaced it, but kept the old battery. We've already moved out of the apartment but still have two weeks left on our lease. After my fiancé and I finished cleaning it, we plan to reinstall the old fire alarm battery so they can enjoy the chirping all day and night until our lease runs out and maybe longer. I love the idea that they're going to call and complain about you and somebody's going to show up and not even hear anything because it takes like a few minutes in between a single chirp. Our next story is Bucket Woman versus the Broken Bin yet again. She won't let up. Despite the signs and someone putting hand-drawn eyes on the side of the bin facing her house. Following the downing of the recycle bin, Martin has tweaked the camera angles a bit and we've repositioned the recycle bin so it's in full view of the cameras and close to the front gate. Things aren't running to schedule this morning. We slept in. Also sorry for any mistakes. And need caffeine. After the baby and fur baby rush hour settled down, something made me check the monitor by the front door. On the camera, I could see the bucket woman approaching the bin from across the road on the other side, away from the eyes. She looked like she was trying to appear casual, but because she's on crutches, she actually looked more like matron Dorothy conniving witch trying to sneak up on someone. Sneak, sneak, sneak. If you don't get the reference, Google Let the Blood Run Free. It's an anarchic Australian comedy from the early 1990s. Consider yourselves warned. It may be the lack of caffeine in my system making me cranky, but I jammed my finger on the intercom and said loudly, Leave the bin alone. I hope she didn't hurt her foot again. Did Buckety jump in the air? No, she kind of hopped around on one foot, flapping her crutches a bit, while she looked around wildly for the source of the mysterious voice. Ooh. This next story is... Nice parking, sir. So, I live in a townhouse where each unit has one designated parking spot. These are pre-chosen for each of the homes, so you can't park in a different spot unless you were to move houses. In these spaces, there's very little room for each car to park. You need to park very carefully and directly in between your lines in order to fit in and not move into a neighboring space. If there is one jerk parker, the whole line will be messed up, and the last person on the line likely won't even have a spot to park. Now, my neighbor, RN, drives an SUV. Nothing too big, but apparently big enough that he can't seem to park it in his lines ever. Frankly, it's just the fact that he straight up pulls in and doesn't bother to readjust his parking, no matter how crooked or out of space that may be. I've watched this. I've put notes on the car, politely asking him to stay within his lines, but he still parks the car the same way. It wasn't too big of an issue until I noticed my neighbor LN with the spot to my left bought themselves a car. This meaning that me being forced to park out of my spot puts them out of a spot too. Once I received a note on my car from LN telling me not to park in their spot, that was the last straw. RN always drives into his spot, meaning that his driver's door is on my passenger side. My car is honestly a 23-year-old junker that's been through a significant amount of road torture over the years. If it gets a scratch, dent, etc., it wouldn't be noticeable to me at all, is what I'm saying. So what I started doing is expertly parking as close as possible to his doors. I'm talking about two millimeters of room between my side mirror and his vehicle. 
I'm a fairly skilled driver, and I'm able to make that parking job with a couple corrections. I've been taking my time to do this every single day I see him over the lines. Yesterday, I walked outside with my dog and saw him crawling across his passenger seat to the driver's side. Mission accomplished. I say OP keeps this up because honestly, OP will probably quietly be coaching them to get better at parking. Our next story is fart in my dog's face and feel the wrath. Background info, new roomie, male 25, invited to live with the boyfriend, male 25, and I, female 25, in our four bedroom home. Because he needed a place to live cheaper than his situation, we wanted to save on monies and we had extra space. No big deal until I noticed he's freaking weird around my two dogs, male and female, both two years old, both rescues. First weird thing, I'm home alone with Rumi eating dinner together and he casually asks if the towels in his guest bathroom were ever used on the dogs. I said no, those are humans only, the dog towels are the ratty colorful ones in the garage. I figured they were stinky or something. Instead he says, oh no, I'm allergic to dogs and when I used that towel, I broke out in hives on my body. I naturally freaked and asked to check out the hives. There were none to be seen. If he had an EpiPen, no. If he needed to go to the ER, no. He kind of was just very casual about it and was like, nah, it's chill. Maybe the dog's late on it because I leave it on the bathroom floor. Insert bewildered face from me here. I've never had someone be allergic to something and so casual about a brief encounter. Thought it was weird, but he seemed totally okay. So I left the topic alone until boyfriend came home from work. We're in our bedroom, laying in bed, talking, and I bring up the situation, mostly asking the boyfriend if he knew in their 20 years of friendship that the roomie was allergic to dogs, and why on earth would he agree to live with us when we have two? The boyfriend's just as bewildered as I am. Apparently the roomie grew up with two dogs at home, and a few years ago a roommate of his had a dog too. We decided to drop the topic because the roomie was so casual about this allergy. Next, I noticed that sometimes the roomie will attempt to jump scare my female dog. She's a rescue and came from an abusive situation, so she's fairly jumpy and skittish. The roomie likes to hide behind walls and jump and yell at my girl, scaring her and just cackle so evilly. This just seems so mean. He'll also occasionally chase her like they chase you at haunted houses, so she's like freaking running for her life because he scares her. I talk to him about it and he's like, yeah, I'll stop, it's hilarious, sorry. Except, I don't think he stopped, only stopped doing it when I'm home. Sometimes I'll come home and she'll be cowering in the bedroom looking freaking traumatized. Note, he doesn't do this jump scare to my boy dog, in fact he tends to be sweeter and tell him how pretty he is. Third, this is what really got me and spurred my reason for petty revenge. The roomie will grab my girl dog's face and hold it between his legs so his butt is centered over her face and fart on her face. I saw it happen once, but based on her reaction when he was grabbing her face, I'd assume he's done this before. I was livid. I flipped out and yelled at him for doing that. Who the heck farts on a dog's face? He basically told me I was overreacting and it's normal for humans to fart and he wanted to direct it on her face because he thinks her skittish behavior is hilarious. The boyfriend wasn't home yet so I left with my dogs to go to the dog park to cool off and get her away from him. The boyfriend comes home and I informed him of what happened and how I felt like the roomie didn't care for my feelings, brought up everything else stated above too and the boyfriend goes to have a chat with his friend. The chat was fruitless. The roomie said sorry, but probably didn't mean it. I really think he still does this crap when the boyfriend and I are at work. So finally, petty revenge time. I came home and my girl was acting strange again. She was scared, cowering, and kept whimpering under the bed. I figure the roomie did something while we were at work. So when he left for his next shift, I went to the backyard, picked up every single poop that was still out there from the dogs, each in their own individual bags had eight piles of bagged poop and hid them all over the roomie's room. I'm talking hard to reach corners, under furniture, in the closet. 
This dude wants to claim a dog allergy, harass my girl dog, fart in her darn face and think he can get away with doing it while I'm not home? Not gonna happen. He hasn't said anything yet, but darn his room smells. I mean, I get like they're friends with OP's BF, but what does it take to kick this guy out? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.